Hello, calculus kids. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. This is Mr. Bean, and today we're going to talk about the properties of limits, specifically algebraic properties of limits. Now, this is actually pretty simple stuff if you can remember things that you did with just regular algebra properties. If you go back to middle school and we first had this time where we had variables and you had an x plus x, and your teacher had to help you understand that that just means there are two x's. Well, limits are pretty similar. If we have f of x plus f of x, and we're taking the limit as x approaches some number, the c doesn't matter. We're just calling it a constant, and it's just some number c. So if you take those two limits and add them together, what do you get? You get that you have 2 times the limit as x approaches c of f of x. OK, so this is just some very basic properties that we're going to talk about today. I cannot show you all possible ways that you might see these, both in the packet and on an AP exam. But doing these examples will help you get a feel for what you're expected to do with properties of limits. So here we have a quick little table. We have uh, this is f of x, this is f of x, and then here you have g. So when you see something on an AP exam or on one of your tests or mastery checks, you want to be careful that you're looking at the, very, the what function it is f g h you know what are these functions called so here we these two are f this one's x approaching negative one x approaches one and then this one is a function of g but x is approaching one so what is this limit so what we're going to have is we just take the limit as x approaches one so the the trick here is that as you approach one as x approaches one you're actually taking the limit of f of negative one See, because you're plugging a 1 in here, so you're really thinking of, as you get really, really close to negative 1, what is this approaching? So that's why, that's why in this case, you actually don't use that one for this first piece, because you want the negative 1. So this is going to equal 2 plus, and then g of x as x approaches 1. So as x approaches 1, g of x is going to equal 6 over 2. So this is just 2 plus 3, or in other words, five. Now, so let me remind you that again, because we weren't just doing f of x, we were doing f of negative x. So that means this x approaching one really means it's x approaching negative one. So that's kind of this weird property that you have to think through with your table of values. All right, let's try another example. Example two, this has composition of functions. You will see this a lot this year where you have a function inside of another function. It just so happens that both these functions are f of x. So as the limit as x approaches 4, what you do is you start with the inside one. So what is that approaching? As x gets really, really close to 4, so as x gets close to 4, the y value, which is right there, is approaching a y value of 1. So that means this is equivalent to f of, and this is just saying uh, approaching this is approaching negative 1. This is not correct notation. I'm just saying this is getting really, really close to negative 1. I could just say this, f of negative 1, but you have to remember it's actually a limit. In fact, the best way to write this would be this, the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. In fact, let me get rid of this, right, this line right here. This would be the best way of writing this and drag that up. So this and this are equivalent because the inside is approaching 1. And now we can say as x approaches 1, what is the y value approaching? The y value is approaching negative 1. So let me repeat what I just did. x approaches 4. The y value is getting really close to 1. So that's what this thing is approaching, the number 1. And so that's your new x value. This is approaching 1. So it's now f of getting close to 1. So x is your new 1, and then there's the y value. So you, it's basically saying you plug in the x to get your y. That's your new x, and you plug it in again. OK, I know, confusing. We'll have a lot of those this year, so you'll get much better at it. All right, last example of properties of these limits. Here you have a table of values. This are the actual function values. If x is 5, y is a 1 for f, g, and h. Uh, and then these are the limits. So they're, they're not the same thing here. The, the y value is a 1, but here the limits y value is a 6. So the function basically is not a, exactly defined at the same point as the limit. So if you look down here, I'm going to underline what the limit is. This whole thing is in parentheses, and that's the limit. Then we're subtracting h of 5. So just make sure you can see the difference. This is not a limit. This is an actual value. 
h of 5. That is going to be a 3 right there at the end. This is all limit stuff. So what is the limit of h of x as x approaches 5? So that's a 5. And then we have this open parentheses, and we figure out f of x. So f of x is 6 plus, and then we have 2 times, what is the limit of g of x? It's negative 1 negative 1, and then we close all the parentheses. So that's the underlined portion. That whole thing was the limit, and then we're going to subtract the value of h of 5. h of 5 was a 3. And then that's it. And then from here, you're just simplifying stuff. This is a 6 minus 2 is 4 minus 3, and then that's 20 minus 3, so we get 17. So one of the more difficult things on this one is just recognizing, are we talking about the limit? Or are we talking about the value of the function? And you just have to distinguish on the table what goes where. The last part of your notes is piecewise functions. Now, this could have been its own special lesson, or maybe I could have thrown this in with some other lessons that were going to come up in the next couple. But it can be a little bit confusing, and I thought it would be better to throw it in here uh, because this lesson is relatively easy. So here, when we deal with piecewise functions and you have to take the limit, when you look at this little minus symbol, that means the left side of negative 5. So we're approaching negative 5 from the left. That represents this first piece here because x is less than negative 5. So we're going to plug a negative 5 into this piece because it's left of negative 5. So you just plug it in, you get 11 minus negative 5. That whole thing's another square root. And then that equals the square root of 16. And so then the answer there is a 4. Okay, now this one, negative 5. And this little plus means the right side of 5. So we want greater than negative 5. And that's where you're going to use the second piece because this one represents positive side of negative 5 or the right side of negative 5. Okay, so let's plug in a negative 5 into the second piece. Negative 5 plus 3 all over 5 minus x squared. So that's negative 5 squared. And then that equals negative 2 over 5 minus 25. 5 minus 25 is negative 20. And then that simplifies to 1 tenth. Okay, and then the last one. The limit as x approaches negative 5, no, notice there is no little plus or minus in the exponent. So that means it's both sides. If you come from the left side and as you come from the right side, what is the y value? Well, since we saw up here the left and right side are different, this one does not exist. It only exists if the left side and the right side are exactly the same. So if these two had both been 4, you'd have an answer of 4 down here. But since they are not the same, the left and right side, you just say does not exist or undefined, something like that. The limit is not there. Okay, for this last part, I'm going to have you just pause the video now, try this one on your own, and then hit play again, and I'll have the answers appear, and you can just see if you did it right. And there are your answers. This first one was a value of 3. If you plug a negative 1 into the left side there, the second one, this you had to know your properties of logarithms. So natural log of e cubed, this just means natural log and e, those always cancel each other out. Or you could think of this as the natural log of e is 1, the th and the power rule of logarithms, the 3 can come to the front. Either way, that all cancels out and you just get 3. Uh, and then this one is does not exist. Some of you might have thought, oh, it's 3 and 3, so this one must also be 3. But this one was x approaches negative 1. This is x approaches e from the right. You had to check and see, what about e to the, from the left? So you had to plug an e into this one, which is what I did here. I plugged an e in and saw that that has, is not even close to 3, so the limit does not exist. The left side is different from what the right side was of e. Okay, that's everything for this lesson. Rock that mastery check, and I'll see you back in the next one.